We pulled Malcolm out of the library. He was reading books. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was reading them. I was wait, what, what, what you said reading? <laughs> <laughs> I saw the movie first, so that count. That's count, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So we're in our new series. This is the first um week in this series called Breaking News, a Christmas series. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry- yeah. Um, I feel like, I mean, I'm sure I feel like this every year, but I do feel like Christmas came a little soon. Like maybe we should extend October a little bit. I've been thinking October should be a long month. Okay. Um, maybe like 35 days or something like that. I like October. I'm going to start a petition for that. And I also don't really like the name Irmo for a city. (laughs) Nobody wants to say they're from Irmo. And so I'm starting a petition, you guys just finding out about this, that we're going to rename Irmo. We're just going to start calling it by a new name, which is Palm Lake. Palm Palm Lake. Lake. Yeah, it's like, where where are you from, Ray? Oh, I live in Palm Lake. Much better. Where where do you live, Ray? Irmo. Irmo, that's where we go. Irmo, come on, get down (laughs) with the flow. Irmo, what else could you want, Mo? Irmo. It's a new city. It's Palm Lake. We're changing it one person at a time. I'm probably going to be the mayor. I think you should be. <laughs> so when we moved here, my son, because we moved from a small town that had a French and Indian war fort, and they okay. had a celebration every year, and they called it Fort Days. And, you know, there were parades and good food and all kinds of artists came and music. It was a wonderful time. We move here and he's like, Mom, what kind of festivals do they have here? The okra The okra He was like, are you kidding me? They have named a festival after a vegetable? <laughs> mm-hmm. It Rocky. took him a while to get over that. I mean, he may not have gotten over it. Yeah. Gotta be vegetarian. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Welcome to Second Take at East Lake, a podcast of East Lake Community Church in Irmo, South Carolina. You are invited to join us any Sunday at nine or eleven. You know, I went to school with the creators, Betty Tales, and his son. His son was on my volleyball team, Betty Tales. Yep. Yeah. No Bill way. Bill Fisher's son was on yeah. your volleyball team? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, his daughter, Sydney, well, she was a sophomore. And then his son, Jeremy, was a senior. We were on the same volleyball team. The mother, uh, she did the photography for our volleyball team. So I, I hung out with him uh, a decent bit and everything my senior year. Yeah. And his dad wow. would do, like, the performance. So I asked him, like, are you ever annoyed, like, that your dad be doing the voices? He like... Yeah, you get used to it. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> what Malcolm is almost famous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fisher. He's like one of my heroes. That's crazy, man. Wow. So you played volleyball too, huh? Yeah. I played in my se- yeah, I played in my senior year. Uh yeah, it's it was pretty it's pretty it's not as easy as it looks. I thought I would be good because I was tall, but it is actually a whole lot harder doing doing volleyball and everything. Yeah. I've been thinking about putting in a mud volleyball pit in the, my backyard a midsummer. Mud yeah, just straight up mud. And what just, is the point? Uh, just a really good time. <laughs> you know, Malcolm, you come play because <laughs> you just lay out for uh, it. I, I guess, I guess I can, I can do mud volleyball, but I don't know how my, I don't know how my feet would do though, like mud. Yeah. I see a a lot of people getting hurt. Yeah, it'd be a good time. All right, let's get to this this podcast. Um, because I know Rob, if Rob's watching, he's thinking, "Come on, guys, get to it, get to the point here, get to it." Yeah. So this one, um, is was the first of the series, and really, I kind of I felt like it was a lot about hearing from God, and and how do we hear from God, and the things that God tells you, or those are the things that. I was gleaning from it and we'll hear from you guys um, what you heard from, from the message. But a cool question that we thought would be fun to start with is, do you hear from God? And I I think that most people would love to know the answer to this. 
And if so, how? So do you hear from God? And if you do hear from God, how do you hear from God? Because so many people in our church, I think, or just in life in general, it, it's like this ambiguous, like, is it just an emotion? Do you, you know, is it an audible voice? Is it a creak in the floor? So if you hear from God, what's it like? I feel like everybody's leaning in, like, what are they going to say here? Because everybody's interested in this. Mm. Right. Um, I would have to say that it's multiple ways for me. Um, it can happen in my devotional time while I'm reading the word or journaling about something that I just read. It's happened um, like an audible voice. I've heard that before. Um Sometimes it's the still, most times it's the still small voice. Whereas like, I feel like he's speaking specifically to me, to my heart about an issue. Um, if not to prepare me for something that's up and coming, to help me navigate the, the actual here and now. Like there are times, and this has happened like the last, I would say twice in the last two months where I'm at this, um, this juncture where I can give something or choose not to give something. And he's done this twice. And the, the last time was as recent as yesterday, where he had told me to give to um, a Salvation Army uh, ringer, because I don't. I, I, I regularly do not. And we no need to get into why, but I don't. And so he said, give them a $20 bill. And I'm like, come on, God, I'm, I'm, I'm about to go in the grocery store. He's like, on your way out, give him twenty dollar bill. Mm. All right, I leave the store, and I put the twenty dollar bill in the thing, and it don't even get in all the way. And I'm not gonna say it's because I didn't want to stick it in the, in the little thing. <laughs> <laughs> but the guy, I got a few nickels in my like, pocket. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead. Just push that on down. I said, you go ahead and you do that. And I walked off. And this is Monday because, you know, Monday is my day of rest. So I go home and I'm rummaging through my, one of my drawers just because it looked like it was junky. And so I was trying to bring order back to it. And this is a closed drawer, you know, socks and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, what do I find in that drawer? $20. A $20 bill. <laughs> and I was like, mm -hmm. nice one, God. I, I see you. I see what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and so the last time it had something to do with me giving a larger amount of money to an absolute, and I mean a larger amount of money to a complete stranger that was down on their luck. Wow. And, and um, he, he put his finger on me again and told me, you have what he's asking for. And I did not want to give it. I did everything. I went into the church. I told the individual, I'll come back and talk to you later. And the Lord was like, put your stuff down and go back outside to have a conversation with this man. And I want you to give him this money. And this was when I got back from Israel. Mm -hmm. And so I knew what I had in my handbag <clears throat> because I had money just in case we needed to do something when we got back. I gave I gave that money away. I even prayed reluctantly. <laughs> and what did God do? When I went to go pick up my battery, my um, lawnmower battery from uh, O'Reilly's, the same amount of money that I would have spent on getting a new battery because they told me, they said, Mr. Washington, this battery is dead and it's out of warranty. Mm. I was like, okay. So I was ready to pay for it. And the girl said, so go over there and grab that battery and bring it up to the counter. So I grabbed the battery. She scanned it. She did something else. She said, have a great day. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, God, <laughs> I, hear, I hear you. I see what you're doing. So, yeah, that's how I hear from God. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. But the, the girl lost a job, right? She didn't. She let you go with it for free. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm thinking about, right? Well, he is still girl. working there. Okay. okay. <laughs> My mama called that when when it don't ring up and you keep going, you don't have to pay. She called out a ghetto blessing. But I'm like, Ma, what happened to the person? <laughs> but I hear you, Ray. I hear you. 
<laughs> There's no ghetto in Irmo. Yeah. Palm Lake. <laughs> Palm Lake. Palm Lake hostage. E L. <laughs> yeah, we even have a gang sign. Oh, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> okay, back to it, because that was good, right? What about you guys? Do you hear from God? And if so, how? How? Uh, yes. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, um, I hear from God mostly in the same way as that Ray has mentioned. I find that if I really need clarity about something, I have to journal. And I don't generally journal um, by handwriting. I generally journal on my laptop. And Ooh. so I will sit down and ask God questions and then give him the opportunity to respond. And I will try to capture anything that comes to my mind so that then I go back and I evaluate, does that, is that God? Um, and so I try not to spend too much time evaluating it when it's coming, but I find that to be really helpful is just to allow him to speak to me when I'm journaling. So that's cool. I hate journaling. Do you like journaling, Michelle? Um, I don't journal every day. I oh, tend... my gosh. You journal enough that you're going to start that by saying, I don't journal every day. Yeah. It's like saying, do I like eating vegetables? It's like, well, I don't eat vegetables at every meal, but I eat them at 90% of every meal. Well, I <laughs> eat vegetables at every meal. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah me too. Yeah. But I, I like journaling. It you it do. helps me empty what's in my head onto paper. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I can go back and I can capture things. Like um, before I moved here, I had a dream about moving here and the circumstances by which I would move here. And I recorded that dream in my journal. And then I forgot about it. Well, after I moved here and was distressed, I'm like, Lord, I don't feel like I should be here. This is not what I signed up for. I was reading back through my journals. And I mean, like the circumstances were identical. I was like, look at you, God, you told me this. And so sometimes God will tell me something and then he will hide it from me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and then when it comes around, he'll say, remember, I told you this. And I'm like, oh. Yes, you did. Ooh. Wow, that's cool. My mom liked to journal. She wrote down everything. That was the way she'd pray. And it yeah. would be like sticky notes all over the place. Yep. Me and Rosemary. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. She'd stick them on her steering wheel in her car, whatever prayers or different things. Yep. Wow. What about you, Malcolm? Oh, that's good, Michelle. All that was good. That was truthful. I don't know what Philip's saying about them vegetables. I mean, <laughs> we just had a big, big pint of vegetables before we got on here, right? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, not Philip. <laughs> Philip had that. Made with there's there's chemicals uh, in this. There's no way they made ice make hey, ice. Smart car. Hey. Uh, <laughs> so for me, oh, man, it's when, yeah. So. I'm not an early morning person, but it works my schedule to exercise in the morning. When I'm working out, man, just the word comes to me like very clearly. And it's it is like a piece by piece throughout the workout. And if I string I string together a few days of uh, of exercising a week, like I got a lot of good confirmation. So you if you notice, you know, there, 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 there's a little, my hair is a little short. And when it came to me, you know, realizing it's time to cut my hair, I've been growing my hair for almost three years. I was wrestling with it a little bit, but um, working out, uh, he was just like, it's, it's time to let it go. It's time to let it go. I'm like, no, I can, I cannot sit in a barber chair. I cannot do it. And he next, next workout, it was like, Malcolm, you got a community, Malcolm, you got a community. Next work, I was like, Malcolm, celebrate. You got to learn how to sell. How bad do you want to celebrate everything I'm doing in your life? You got to learn how to celebrate. Community, celebrate, cut the hair, do it at youth group. If you can't sit in that, if you sit, can't sit in the barber chair and let him cut that junk off, 
why don't you celebrate this with the people that you know is going to give you none but energy? It's going to have fun. We're going to have a party cut this hair. <laughs> <laughs> so Eric, so that was literally the confirmation. I was like, all right, God, I'm going to go into youth group last week. We played a little game. People won, and they got to shave the head. And um, <laughs> it was, <laughs> first of all, they went against it. The, they went to the back of the kitchen. With, with with all the naps and they went straight up. I felt like some firecrackers was going off. Pop, 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 pop. Like it was, oh man. <laughs> Thank God uh, Abby Littleton was there helping them out, flip it and everything. But when I hear from God, it's when I'm exercising and it just, I mean, it's like Ooh. a sequence every day. And um, I don't always like it, but I was like, okay, I see what you're doing. And eventually I'm, I'm content with it. Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, what about you, Philip? I I I hear from God differently. There's not really one one way. Probably the way that is most common is like if there's um a question or like a need or like an obstacle in that I'll I'll pray and say, Okay, God, you you know. So if it's here, if the answer is here, then I'm open to hear it. Well, you, you know, let me know. Let me know what it is that I'm supposed to do with this conversation or let me know if it's this. And then I kind of like open the door. Like it's like an admittance for me that like, okay, God, you got the answer. I don't. It kind of starts there. And then it's like, and then I leave the door open. And usually like within like 24 hours, it's like, oh that's genius I would have never thought of that and you're like that is really good you know and then I'll usually call Kristen and be like you're never gonna believe this <laughs> she's like that's actually a really good idea or whatever you know and she'll and I'll be like yep and so it just like kind of I hope leave the door open and then a lot of times got not all the time and then the other thing there's also areas of my life that I don't trust my judgment because I can't tell if it's like my humanity would get in the way. And so then it's like, I can't tell if this is something that I want or if this is something that God wants. And in those situations, I usually um, submit to other people too. So it's like, all right, this is what I'm thinking. Um, is this crazy? You know, I'll ask other people and like try to submit to other schools of thought other than just my own. Cause it's like, I don't know if that's just my own conscience wanting me to do something that I want to do. Cause I'm telling you, I really, at the end of the day, none of us, and we could probably all say this, we don't want to not be in the will of God. Um, we we've, we've been there enough that we know that that's, I mean, there's no point. It's like, you might, you might as well just run into a brick wall. Um, so it's like, I want to get this right, but sometimes I can't tell if what's right is my desires or God's desires. Sometimes God's desires are like my desire. Well, many times my desires are God's desires, um, but and vice versa. Yeah. You know, Phil, I'm glad you answered it that way because I can say this. You actually did that a couple of weeks ago. Oh, really? Where you reached out to me and Pastor Michelle about an issue. And you you asked because you were like, I just want to know because there's an opportunity in front of me and I want to know if this is me or if something else is going on. Mm -hmm. And you gave us an opportunity to just, you know, encourage you as well as give you our vantage point regarding the decision that was in front of you and Kristen. And That's so, true. Yeah. And that was a helpful, that was a helpful thing. Yeah. So, yeah, through other people a lot of times. Because, you know, it is interesting. It is it is true that the closer we are to God, our desires really do align with his desires. But it's still good to just double check. <laughs> At least for me, like, there's no harm in double checking. Right. And if you're not afraid, if it's God's will, then you're not afraid that somebody's going to tell you something you don't want to hear. Because if it's God's will, that's what you want to hear. So let them tell you if it's something you don't want to hear. Yeah. Like, let it be. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get this out in the open because we don't want to go down some tough roads just to end up in the same place. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
But I am real cautious to say, I am one of those people that's like overly cautious to say, like God told me, you'll probably rarely hear me say that, you know, like from the stage or anything. And it's not that I don't believe that God tells people stuff. It's just, I'm, I'm real, I err on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, nothing against people who do that at all. It's just kind of, that's the way I operate. Cause I'm, I err on the side of caution, but not in most of my life. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say you, you, you're, you take risks. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what? I think an area where maybe we could all agree is that when we're going to seek somebody's input for, you know, is this a right decision in my life? We have to know that we've got the right people yeah. to talk to about it. I right. mean, I don't, I don't just ask anybody for their opinion or give them the open door to speak into my life. Um, you know, it, there are certain people that I allow to speak into my life. Because mm -hmm. I know they're walking with Jesus. I know they're spiritually mature. Um, you know, you need to have some kind of guidelines for who you're going to ask to confirm what the Lord might be saying or not saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's good. I'm glad you said that. I mean, for me, it's like when I say that the Lord has done this or the Lord spoke to me, for me, it's like it's it's like I wait for the dust to settle a little bit. And then I'm like, it's kind of like, I'll say it like a season after God really told me it or like, like a, like a certain amount of time after I'm like, Hey, and then I'll have confirmation, not just from things I'm seeing from a few different people. And so when I'd say like a per, a coach told me, I was like, God told me this when it came to me and basketball and not going down the, you know, doing it professionally, God told me, he's like, Malcolm, check it out. You're a great basketball player. You're a really talented basketball player. God told me this. Malcolm, you're not an entertaining basketball player. And you know what? People, I was like, people pay for entertaining. You're not entertaining. Malcolm, I think you're great, but I don't think anybody will sit there and pay to watch you play basketball. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was in my, I was like, what God? I was like, why are you sitting? I was like, Malcolm, hear me, hear me. But I think you can have a career in ministry and being a fitness trainer. I see that. Okay, I see that, but I don't see you are not entertaining with basketball, but you can do this other thing. And yeah. <laughs> that was all no one told, and that was that's a pretty bold thing that God he clearly told me that <laughs> in my feelings, but I'm like, no, you know. <laughs> He's like, Malcolm, I'm getting tired of watching you play. It's not entertaining anymore. Yeah, li listen. <laughs> <laughs> he's like i love i know you're trying to do the overseas route and you enter your name and grab everything i don't i know you did that but bro i'm telling you ain't nobody gonna see you but hey it, it's, it's all been confirmed now that this was yeah. supposed to go god knew he was talking about he ain't got I, to say that but that <laughs> i entered i entered in for the tv show survivor oh you did i know another yeah. person over here did something like ray that. you did it too yeah. <laughs> We both done it. I didn't know you entered in. Wow. Oh, yeah. You I submitted video and all. What was I would... saying when he said no to that? What was he trying to say? It was silence. It... You know what? Honestly, I don't think it was the right time. Okay. Yeah. I don't think it was the right time. You know what? Because it right? wasn't like, go ahead, Philip. If they do a co worker survivor and me and you got to do it, can you imagine? Oh, that would be so exciting. Ray, Ray would have found some type of seasoning um, mister on that island. He would have he would have hooked it up. He would have some type of rice gumbo, boiling rice gumbo, just just boil boil boiled water. He would have made it would have made it taste good. What yeah, are... Ray, <laughs> on Survivor, we would have killed. We would have so much fun. Oh man, what, Ray what, hates what's the on? outdoors. You hate the outdoors. <laughs> That's why he's but, perfect but, for it. But Michelle. Two things, and I i mean, you're only going to get two guesses at this. Why would I sign up for Survivor? To overcome your I, fears. What, what, uh, okay, okay, that's one. I'll give you that one. But okay. what else? What else do I love more than the outdoors? Oh, competition and interacting with people. <laughs> mm. so, for me, so... Yeah, and I I lose weight, I look even better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we all need to go on Survivor so we can drop our uh, Thanksgiving turkey weight. Is that yeah? 
And all of Eastlake would be like, I had no idea Philip had that many tattoos. <laughs> this man. Yeah, I would have loved to do it, man. I would love to do it, but they didn't even not not even a callback, nothing. Not even a I didn't even think I got an email. But I think the coworkers would have been killer if they did like a a coworker thing or something. We would we would get it. Super fans. That's all right. Well, let let's keep going. So another cool thing was this. You know, it was the message that the angel gave is stating that um Zechariah would have this child and and it just didn't seem possible and you know and because of his doubt or lack of faith he was struck mute um and and I just it kind of brought up this thing of like God has God given you any word about your kids that you couldn't believe or just a word about your kids or was there Anything when your kids were born that you're like, that's not, nah, mm -mm. or were you guys just full of faith? Perfect angels. I was an angel, of course, but. You were an angel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My word about my kids, or at least one of them didn't come until later. Um, really? Yeah. And so, you know, we were in a particularly difficult parenting season and one of my kids was pretty young. Yeah. Um, and I was really crying out to the Lord because, you know, as a parent, we don't feel equipped sometimes, even when they're young for some of the things that we walk through with them. And, um, I was just really lamenting and went to sleep crying. And the Lord gave me a vision of Jesus with my child on his lap. And he was writing my child's name in the book of life. And, uh, you know, I, I held on to that. And I also thought, oh my goodness, what are we going to walk through? Um, why, why do I need to know this? Yeah. Why do I need to know this? Um, but I hung on to that through some difficult years, but it didn't come when they were born. It came, came later. Hmm. Cool. We went through a season <laughs> where there was like radio silence from God after we had Spencer and we could not have any more kids and we wanted to have a larger family but n n there were no answers there was no problem that doctors could figure out it was just radio silence mm -hmm. and then it was one of those things where kind of like I was describing earlier where five years in we were just kind of left the door open of like all right God what do you want to do like what are you trying to do here and we remember I remember going to Disney World with Spencer and there was like two parents to one kid. Like we both had a hand, like it was so easy. You know, you see all these parents with strollers and backpacks and we were just like, this is so easy. We have so much capacity for more, you know, and that's cool. Like, I'm so thankful that we have Spencer, but it just seems like there's more capacity. We lived in a five bedroom house and it was just like, there's, there's, what do you, you know? And then one day it was like, God just said, it'll talk about God speaking. It was like, you don't want an infant. Infants are hard because now we're five years in, you know, and Spencer's getting easy. He's in kindergarten. It's like, did you know that there are tons of kids who are not infants that they need somebody to adopt? Because we had gone down the adoption road where you're like begging people to choose you. And it felt so weird. And then we were like, wait, a and we really didn't even like think about it. There are lots of children out there that they need somebody. There's no line for these kids trying to get in. You don't have to sell yourself to try to convince somebody. They need parents and they're older kids. And that was the moment that we realized we were not supposed to adopt an infant. We're supposed to adopt somebody out of the foster care system. And then that was when we ended up with Mandy and Nathan, who are siblings by birth. So, and we got them when they were ages one and two, almost two and three. Cool. Yeah, but that was God giving me a word of like, hey, yeah. this is, but he also changed our desires. You know, in the beginning, you want infant. Oh, man, we just want to have a baby so bad. And then one day you're like, we don't want a baby. Not even a little bit do we want a baby. <laughs> hmm. Like our whole dynamic had changed. Because once your kids get a little older, you're like, uh-uh. Mm. So God changed our desires. 
Anybody else? Gosh, oh, all right. So I got I got three little children, three little kids, three boys. Uh, Kaden, Keenan, and Corbin. Uh, so with with Kaden uh, was our first child. He was we were uh, like freshmen in, in college around there. And a lot of people don't know Kaden's not my biological son, but I've known him since before he was born. Like, hey man, like like no, like I like I've been there, but I ain't put no lease down. Like, don't like you you my kid, bro. I've been rocking with you. Don't try and do that. To me. <laughs> <laughs> One day, if you ever try and say you're not my father. But I'm I'm not your father. I'm your daddy. I always been here. Don't don't try. It. <laughs> <laughs> so I think in in my insecure ways, I was listening to every thought that told me, you know what, man, just roll. Like this is. I think it was before Corb Caden was born. Like Malcolm, just roll. Give me an out. And I remember talking to one of my mentors about, man, I'm just gonna bounce. I'm a roll. He's like, all right, Malcolm, you know I'm with you whatever you do i'm with you just know that you're wrong for leaving patricia i said what i said listen i'm your boy i got your back just know you're wrong the reason you have you're leaving you're wrong and i was wrestling with i'm like what do you mean he says malcolm you're wanting to leave because you want your first son to be biologically yours okay and, but you're, what you're really saying is you want a relationship that's flawless, the ideal type. That's what you're looking for. And so if you leave Patricia for that and search for another companion expecting perfection or whatnot, or what, guess what? That woman is going to come with different baggages or different things with herself as well, just like you. And so you're, and then you're going to have an issue with that. So I'm with you. Just know you're wrong if you leave her. And I wrestled <laughs> with that <laughs> until Corbin was born. And I was like, you know what? You know, thank God God spoke to him in my immaturity. And now, and, and, and when he was born, I was sobbing because I still felt like, I don't think this is my son. I don't, I was like, I was in the hospital, very emotional. And her dad said, hey, listen here, man, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. If I was you, I would have bounced. I would have rolled. But man, understand this. This is not just a day. You have this child for a lifetime. That's your son for a lifetime. You're not even going to remember this day compared to all the other days you'll have with him. And after nine years, oh my goodness, like I remember all these days even more than I do his birth. So I'm so glad God whooped my butt through talk through those mentors. I'm so glad he did, man, because... Yeah, I don't know where I'll be without without my firstborn son. I really don't. And I don't look at him any differently. Yep. I ain't Lisa none. This you mine, man. Shoot. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm, what's cool about your story is that you circle back to Phyllis' first question. How do you hear God talk to you? Or do you? And you just gave us a whole dialogue where God was talking to you about your relationship with Patricia and what you should do next. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. It is. Yeah, man. Hey, Ray, you kind of shared a little bit too on Sunday. Did you want to share anything else or you, you can? I mean, I feel like I, I shared it on Sunday about Trey and how yeah. he was like the miracle child. So, yeah, I mean, we, we had, Charlotte had a lot of peace um, yeah. when he was born because it helped her to realize that what the doctors had said was not true. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah, God always gets the last word. You know. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. So I got a I got another question for you guys. These are really good questions. I can't take credit for, but they're good ones. Um, I will. No, I'll take credit <laughs> for it. <laughs> My humility is known throughout the universe. Just <laughs> <laughs> humblest guy you'll ever meet. I love this. Um, what excuses? do you use and this would be a good question for our listeners if you're watching this live to type in what excuses do you use to not trust god that's a hard one 
I got to learn. I got to learn a disability. I, I, I can't. Mm -hmm. I can't sit still enough to read the Bible. I've used, <laughs> I got to learn a disability. I can't sit still. I can't read the Bible. Um, it doesn't make sense to me. So you know, I got to learn disability. I, I yeah. do that all the time. I used to <laughs> <laughs> ADD. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. When my mom used to call us, and we didn't want to respond, or we wanted to play like we were deaf. We would say, huh? And her response to that was, if you can say, huh, that means you heard me. Smart so, mom. <laughs> so I think often people don't want to hear what God has to say. And you could chalk it up to a lot of different reasons that you feel like what he's going to tell you is going to call you to hard stuff. You can say that you you don't want to hear him or you you have trouble hearing him because it is going to go against what you want to do. Um, I mean, there are a lot of different reasons why we why we uh, try to ignore God's voice. But the reality is, is once you realize that he is good. Mm -hmm. Psalms 105, 100 verse five mm -hmm. talks, uh, talks about for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endureth to all generations. When you know that the Lord is good, you know when he speaks to you, it's for your good. Even if it's not good to you, it's good for you. Like in that relationship or stop doing this, it is always for our good. Mm -hmm. And often we just don't want to listen because we want what we want. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, and I think when, especially early on in my Christian walk, you know, I would waffle back and forth because I wanted something, but I felt like God was leading in another direction. And so you try to rationalize and all of a sudden, you know, you can't tell anymore what God wants because you're so in yourself. And so as a younger believer, sometimes I had to get myself into the space where I was like, okay, God, I'm willing to be willing. I am willing to accept whatever you say and get my head in that space before I even ask him, what are you going to say? Like I had to already have myself to the place where I'm going to say yes to you, Lord, whatever it is. Um, mm -hmm. because if I didn't, then I would spend all this time kind of chasing my tail. And it's exactly what Ray said. I really wanted what I wanted and I wanted God to go along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Uh, go ahead, Malcolm. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, I think when that person wasn't there for me, you don't understand, God, like my my daddy, my mama, the person didn't show up and the people you got in my life now, they don't look like me. They ain't the same ethnic or skin or whatnot. They so you I, I hear I used to say that a lot. And sometimes I still do that person's not there. That's and and so that that, you know, I mean, have y'all been there before? Because I'll be there sometimes. I definitely I used to that that, that person didn't show up. They're not there for me. So this explains why I'm going to this vice. Mm. Yeah. yeah yeah but god had to show me especially when you know and I, I share this with ray when it was my graduation me and my wife both graduated from graduate school together mm. and i love my dad me and my dad have a great relationship now um i invited him never been to a graduation never really needed much from him but i'm just like hey come i'm like never been in my bathroom again, nothing but he said, he actually, he's like, hey, I'm coming. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I mean, I was telling everybody about it and everything. And when he didn't show up, mm. but you know what? Michelle stopped by. Y'all was all reaching out. Ray stopped by, you know, and then came back when my mom wasn't there. But he came back, you know, later on that day. And then Rob stopped by and they sat down and, 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 the, you know, God was like, listen, Malcolm, you know what? More than the person that you need in your life, more than likely, they're not coming. They're not showing up. But you got your crew right here. So mm. you're going to have to get up and you're going to have to go with the crew I got for you. 
All right. Mm -hmm. I created a party right here, a table right here. Go mm -hmm. sit at that table. All right. And stop wondering who's coming. And that's what I feel like oh, we really got to do sometimes. You know, we really that's gotta good. Do that. Yeah, man. That's great advice. Yep. Wow. That reminds me of when Jesus says, who is your mother or who is my mother or my brother? Mm -hmm. and, but those that do the will of my father. And so often being a transplant myself, um, God puts you in situations where either you can embrace the family he's provided. Or you can suffer the consequences for not. Mm hmm. And it's, yeah. I, I hate to make it that black and white, but it, it is that black and white. Yeah. Um, he's not going to take you someplace to not um, graft you into and make you a part of a community because it, he has a plan and that plan has to do with his glory and that's best done in community. And so if you are, you know, relocated and you're too busy bemoaning what you don't have, whether it's the food, the spaces, the places, the people, and yet he's provided you this whole new template of opportunities and you've rejected those you'll pay for that mm -hmm. because yeah. life happens every day and when you look around and you say i don't have anybody it won't be because he didn't provide it mm -hmm. it'll, it'll be because you rejected what he provided just the same like when you're fixing your picky kids something to eat they don't starve because there was no food they starve because they rejected the food that you provided <laughs> true yeah they gonna eat them vegetables i don't care what you say. you're gonna eat them vegetables you're gonna do something <laughs> you're going carb smart go to philip's house <laughs> philip's house he got that's carb smart you over here with vegetables man it'll be interesting to see what my kids have to tell the uh counselors when they get older like Ooh, oh oh because I got to say, our house, man, there is no food in our house. We just don't go to the store. We don't cook. But you open the fridge and there's all this kind of stuff. All this kind of stuff everywhere. And Michelle's out here eating like a rabbit, trying to make us look bad. Michelle, we all, You know what my family does? We eat at Kroger. Most, most of the time, my family eats at Kroger. We what all do you go, mean? Like I just grabbed for lunch, I grabbed sushi at Kroger. You go in and get the little sandwiches or whatever. We started doing that during COVID when everything was closed, but grocery stores were still open. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that don't want to go down that rabbit trail. But so you, we got time for one more question. Did you have a question, Ray, you wanted to ask or do you want me to ask one more? Because I have one more. All right. So I like this one. How has God proved his trust, proven his trustworthiness? to Ooh. you how has god proven his trustworthiness to you mm. it would almost be better to say how hasn't he <laughs> hasn't he? yeah because he, he, he i mean if there's if there's a being that doesn't or should never have to prove himself it's god because he provides for us every single day again Going back to the example I just gave, I mean, he provides opportunities for us every day. If we reject those, we pay for that. Mm -hmm. You know, he gives us grace to get wherever we need to go. Whether that's somebody picking you up or whether you have a vehicle. I mean, how many, the times that we recognize his grace, it's the wrong times. When the car doesn't stop, then we realize, oh, you know, or when something doesn't work, it's then we were, we're reminded of how how we've taken things for granted. When your health is failing, then you are appreciative of good health. I mean, God provides for us all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I feel yeah. like he has never let me be in a position where I couldn't pay the bills, no matter how lean things got. You know, I, he has provided for me and as a single person, a single parent it is so important to me. And I have just watched him provide at every step in my life and he's provided financially, but he provides relationally. 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, Ray was just talking about people, him being a transplant. Well, I'm a transplant too. And um, all of you are transplants. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to watch him provide for me relationally, I know it really blessed my parents, my being a single parent away from their influence. My mother used to say all the time, what a blessing our church was to her because she knew people were loving me well. Mm. And so, you know, when I look at all the ways God has provided financially, emotionally, spiritually, relationally, um, he just, and it's not that I have everything in the world. I don't, but yeah. I have everything I need. Yep. I have everything I need. I love that. What about you, Malcolm? You have anything? How God has proven his trustworthiness to you? Ooh, oh, man. All right. I think a uh, uh, specific scenario, uh, I would say when I was coming down here, because I learned this ability, I love my, I love my uh, extended family and whatnot, but I was known as a special child because <laughs> I learned this ability. And so when my, my mom was saying Malcolm's going to college, I was one of the only ones of my cousins and brothers to go to college. So I was going to college, South Carolina. Everybody was like, uh, Trina, you sent a special Malcolm down in South Carolina. Girl, <laughs> you know, he's special. Don't, why are you send a special Malcolm? And she was like, my mom said, I, I'm just going to have to play for my baby. He going to be special at somebody's college. That's what he going to be. All right. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and that was my thing. And, but God had turned that whole special child into you're my special child. And, I, you know, to see my progression, you know, academically in, in being successful with college and in, in marriage and everything like that, and being settled down here, one of the first people to be settled in a stable, you know, suburb and everything like that. Um, I am a special child. So I've seen God, God put his twist. He put his final word. He put his checkmate on the word special child. Mm. I, should make a, I should make a clothing brand called special child. That should be like the, 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 the store. Oh, I'd wear it. <laughs> well, you know, you know, I'd wear it. My, wear it like I was called it. I was uh, called a challenge child. That's what they called me. Oh, this is our challenge child. The challenge, I'll take They the just challenge. could not figure me out, man. They were just like, what is this kid going to do with his life? They were raising a leader. It's yeah. always a challenge to raise a leader. Yeah, I was one of those too. Yep, I was a, I was a challenge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, good for you, Malcolm. Oh, Brother, good you, man. Yeah. this verse to me speaks volumes over your question. It's Psalms 37, verse 25. I was young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. Mm -hmm. And it's not our righteousness, it's his righteousness that is upon us. I've been homeless twice in my life, in college, and as a married, a newly married man, I have not seen us as his child. We didn't have to beg. God provided every time, every day. I grew up with a single mom that was trying to raise three kids on her own, two boys and a girl. I got to see God provide for my mom. There were Sundays at church that the little old ladies would have a $20 bill balled up in their hand and they would walk over to my mom and plant a kiss on her and then put a $20 bill in her hand. And I didn't know it then, but I learned later. That's all my mom had. And I would, she would take us to Aldi and she let me do the grocery shopping because I was more financially or fiscally minded with little money. And I would go in Aldi's and come out with three bags of groceries. And so God, I, my, my, my life is littered with receipts of how God has continued to be faithful. And I just pray people would see that in their own lives. They would sit down and start journaling what God has done for them. If, you, if you're doubting God right now in your life, sit down and just journal when God came through for you. And when you're done, 
you should you have no reason to doubt him. <laughs> yeah, man. I feel like that's really good, and that's a good way to end it. You might even want it if you're watching this podcast tonight at, at night. Do that before you go to bed. Type type it in your phone. Write it on some paper. The things that God has done, how He's proven His trustworthiness, and uh, you'll see you're going to be all right. <laughs> no matter the circumstance, you're going to be all right. Yep. Yeah, I love that. Um. Well, I guess we're going to have to wrap up and uh, call it a night, but I really did enjoy this uh, conversation. This was a good one. It was a great message. It's a great subject to discuss, as they all are, but this this one seems to really stand out in my mind. Um, anyway, so we'll see all you guys next time. See you all later. Right. Bye, everybody. East Lake Community Church is an intentional, multicultural community empowered by the Holy Spirit. We passionately pursue a loving relationship with God and everyone Jesus was sent to die for, here, near, and far.